Even if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for God is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head with oil. My cup is running over. This is our third Digging Deeper study from Psalm 23. Today, the word that we are focused on is the word focus. What we want to accomplish is faithfulness. Sunday was Easter Sunday, and I preached a message on blessed quietness. Today, the key question that I want us to examine is not academic, but it's focused on action. How do we retain and maintain the spirit of the Easter celebration beyond Easter? In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 through 4, we read these words. We ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how will we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him, God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his will. How can we stay focused and remain faithful beyond Easter Sunday? I hope you experienced the blessed quietness of God's great grace on Easter Sunday. But how about today and tomorrow and the days to come? I believe there are five things that we can do to stay focused and faithful. Number one, connect with others who can hold you accountable. He doesn't say, I ought to give the more earnest heed, or you ought to give the more earnest heed. He says, we ought to give the more earnest heed, and we are in this together. We need fellowship with one another, to be connected to one another with accountability if we're going to remain focused and faithful continually on a regular basis, not just connecting on Sundays, but connecting constantly with other faithful believers. Number two, we need to continue in the faith of the apostles with boldness. Continue in the faith of the apostles with boldness. This is really discipleship. He says, these things which were spoken by the Lord were confirmed unto us. The things that the apostles have taught us, the doctrines that they have taught us, we have received and we are to teach others. We are to be declaring these truths to others. And that's what it means to continue in the, in the faith, not just to have the faith, but to constantly rehearse and to teach others the truth, whether they're believers or unbelievers, to always be speaking of the true doctrines of Christ. Continue in the faith. That will help. Hey, Jesus is alive on Monday, <laughs> on Tuesday, Wednesday. He was alive Sunday. We celebrated it, but he's always alive. So we should be speaking of these great truths all the time. Number three, cooperate via action in response to what has been taught. So this is about service. Cooperate via action. He says, give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. When he says the more earnest heed, he's not just saying, remember these things or pay attention to these things. He's talking about responding to the truth that we have heard. Because Jesus is alive, I should live differently. Cooperate via action in response to what has been taught. This will help you to stay focused and faithful. Then number four, calculate the danger of neglecting your responsibilities and opportunities. I should calculate the danger of neglecting my responsibilities and opportunities. He says, how will we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? And the answer is we won't. We won't. It's not just about our soul's salvation. It's about what we're doing with the great salvation that has been entrusted to us. Great opportunities, but great danger if we do not focus on the great gospel that Christ has given to us. Calculate the danger of losing reward 
and of losing loved ones if we do not maintain a focus continually. Calculate the danger of neglecting your responsibilities. And then number five, consider the possibilities of what God can do if we will yield to his will. As we worship him and follow him and serve him, in this passage, he says, uh, signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost were used of God to confirm the witness of the apostles. And he is still willing to confirm his gospel in our mouth. I know we have the word of God and that is enough, but God is willing to do great things through his children to prove that he is alive and well and that he lives in us. Consider the great possibilities of what God can do, not just on Easter Sunday, but every Sunday and every day. If we'll do this, we can stay focused and faithful. Spend some time now discussing the discussion questions and conversing about these principles, these five principles of how we can stay focused and faithful. Mm-hmm.